In New York, there stands an impressive statue of Columbus, a reminder that this is a new continent in the light of history. America not so long ago was a continent of wilderness and open space. Excitement stirred in the hearts of a multitude of men as eyes turned toward the challenge of a new land. Now America is a land of mighty cities, and much of our space has been transformed into urban density. We see this on the East Coast in a city like Boston. And we see the same density on the West Coast in a city like San Francisco. Practically all American cities, large and small, have a similar pattern of density. As we look closely, we see that city lots are narrow. Here is a 24-foot lot. The average city lot is 20 feet, laid out on straight streets in a gridiron pattern. It is not uncommon to find miles of 16 and a half foot lots. And so we observe that the American city is a development of narrow lots. This is the first point. The American city is dense, with a narrow lot pattern. Actually, we can often find lots as narrow as 12 and a half feet. In observing the narrow lot pattern of our cities, it is important to recognize that all classes of property are included. The word density has so long been associated with slums that we have forgotten in America the important truth that all city people have lived in the narrow lot pattern, including the well-to-do. Many of our finest city homes are to be found on narrow lots. The second point to consider is that density was a way of life for all people and included every type of residential property. A question of importance, therefore, is why did all city dwellers adjust their lives to narrow lots? The reason becomes apparent as we see our city stables. This attractive structure was built to shelter horses. Many stables still remain in our cities. These are now converted into much sought after apartments. Not long ago, however, horses were moving in and out of this courtyard. If we are alert, we can often see a vestige of the horse and buggy era, like the hitching post. Indeed, we occasionally see old Dobbin himself. It is of the utmost importance for us to remember that throughout most of the history of civilization, Man has been dependent upon animals for transportation. This, then, is the basic cause of urban density. And the third important point, man built densely because of his reliance on horses. Having built densely on narrow lots, we created many interesting and peculiar properties. Here is a high-rise apartment house on a 22-foot lot. Rising on a horse and buggy lot, such a structure is an interesting illustration of the problem of narrow lot use. In another view, we can see a peculiar situation surrounding a city residence. This home is 20 feet wide, a common city size. And as we look above and to the sky, we see what might well be described as a fine light and air shaft for the abutting properties. Nevertheless, this type of land improvement is far from ideal in terms of land use. Again, however, it reflects the continuing influence of the horse and buggy plan. To illustrate the opposite extreme, we view a 20-foot residence rising above its abutting structures. Such a scene suggests, too, the steady pulse of urban change, a residence now completely surrounded by industry. An extremely interesting observation is to be found at Radio City, the world's largest commercial development. As we look to the ground, we see a typical horse and buggy lot still remaining on one of the busy Radio City corners. Thus we see that the narrow lot pattern tends to endure and can exert its influence on the mightiest of our commercial developments. Indeed, the density of all real estate, wherever it exists, stems directly from the primitive horse and buggy plan, and skyscrapers themselves are no exception. The American city has been amazingly dynamic despite powerful built-in limitations on land use.